Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan and I'm obsessed with luxury skincare. If you're new here, hi, I'm Morgan and this channel is dedicated primarily to luxury skincare reviews, reactions, demonstrations, anything to do with luxury skincare because I have acknowledged early on that there's not enough content out there that talks about luxury skincare in a positive manner and I feel like everybody has what they love and there's a lot of people out there that just love luxury skincare like me. So I definitely wanted to make this channel uh, very positive and an open space where we can all talk about things that we love. There are a ton of other skincare channels out there that talk about affordable skincare and trashing luxury skincare, which is fine, but also this channel is all about luxury skincare. And hi, welcome. If you don't like luxury skincare, still tune in. You could learn about it if you want. We buy it so you don't have to. We try it so you don't have to. All right. So today is like a bit of a story time video and it's about like how I got into luxury skincare. At what point did I like turn? Because I'm only 31 years old. Now I started my luxury skincare love affair when I was like probably 27, I wanna say. Like 27 to 28 years old. By the time I was 29, I was buying full blown La Mer and then I turned 30 and still full blown La Mer and a bunch of others and here I am 31, same thing. So I wanna say around the age of like 27, I really took the leap. 25 and 26 is when I started really dabbling in the skincare game and I dabbled just enough to know that luxury skincare was is where it's at for my skin. So let's just start uh, I just wanted to share my experience and I think it's fun and like if you guys have an experience that you would love to share Please share it in the comments below I absolutely love when you guys interact with my videos and I love sharing things that we all have in common Because I think it's a really great healthy space and it's really great to have that support network of people who just love the same things You love as far as skincare as a whole I did have minor acne when I was a senior in high school I definitely that's when I saw the most acne and yes I I did do Murad and I did do, what is it? Murad? Proactive. I did proactive and the proactive actually helped my acne, believe it or not. But then after that, things just kind of fell off and I never wore makeup really a lot. And I never did skincare a lot. I would wash my face with like benzoyl peroxide, like, like, oh my God, like I just can't. Like I was a hot mess express. But I always loved forms of self-care. I still always love to get my hair done, my nails done. I, I did wear MAC makeup. I've never worn anything but MAC makeup, even lipstick and stuff, lip glosses. Like it was always MAC. It was always some type of higher end cosmetic. I would never be caught dead with like an NYC lipstick. The only time I ever wore like wet and wild or like NYC lipsticks or lip glosses is when I, is when I first started when I was like 12 or 13. And then of course I graduated to like MAC. And that was primarily just because like my aunts and my mom they just wanted me to have like just better quality on my face because i was so young and it's like i don't even think people need makeup at the age of 13 but you know what people love it and people you know and i i think at those age like you ages you really want to like experiment with yourself and you're learning and you're growing and like you're starting to develop like your own identity so I think that's why people start wearing makeup at such a young age but the whole skincare aspect wasn't really introduced to me that much because the like the idea was always like you're too young you don't need that makeup your skin is is you know you're too young to start with skincare and retinols and um moisturizers and like they just didn't like really promote that to me and also I think the only thing skincare wise was stuff to just help me keep my acne under control so once I kind of grew out of the acne stage uh is when I just kind of slowed down altogether I went to college you know what I'm saying and then like when you're in college you're really just in sweatpants and like sweatshirts a lot and the hair it just I yeah I just I don't even know who that person is anymore. <laughs> so anyway, it all really started happening for me again. Like I started getting really into things again was like after I 
got married because my focus like after school was getting a job and starting a career and like buying my first home and like dating my husband and, and like that was my goal and focus it was never like I don't know beauty it was weird I was very driven so I would go to work with no makeup all the time like I, I didn't focus on my self-care really that much I was really focused on the job and, and talking to clients and building myself up and my resume up and like waking up in the morning the first thing I would think of was work what I gotta get what I what I had to do that day what I needed to accomplish I was a paralegal in the legal field so paralegal work is very stressful especially when you're working for like personal injury law firms it's it's very high pace you get a lot of clients you have a lot of hearings going on um a lot of discovery and like a whole legal aspect that I was totally focused on filing with courts showing up everything helping attorneys like everything so like when I would wake up in the morning like thinking of a skincare routine was just the last thing on my mind and I would just go to work I still always dressed cool though I always bought like nice clothes to wear to the office and I always felt like well as long as I have a nice outfit and my skin is in a mess a mess and like I had a really cool pair of designer eyeglasses I was good to go which I totally was and at the time I had LASIK so at the time, I'm going off top subject, but at the time I literally would buy like Dior eyeglasses, Chanel eyeglasses, Tiffany eyeglasses, like these really, really cool designer frames that would like cover my face. So the focus would just be on my frames. And then I would have like, like a nice like Banana Republic suit or something on. And like that was how I functioned for the first part of my 20s. And then of course the weekends I'd go out partying with my friends and be like crazy with like my MAC makeup and like, oh. So after I got married, things started calming down for me. I started getting more comfortable with my life. I like a big stressor of like buying your first home and getting married and planning a wedding and all of that, like all those stressors and on top of trying to maintain a career, like that seemed to calm down for me. So I really started feeling free again to start taking better care of myself. And I started out with affordable skincare. Uh, Back then, like Jaclyn Hill was really, really popular. Like Jeffree Star just started popping off and like all these really famous like gurus started popping off. Skincare, it wasn't really a thing though. Like skincare I feel like is now starting to become trendy. But when I was like 26 years old, it really wasn't. It, the, the makeup beauty YouTube game really kind of just started. So I was buying all kinds of makeup and I was starting to dabble in that, but I was never really a heavy makeup wearer and I just got sick of it. And like, I was like, I don't know, like I just really liked to be natural. I remember always relying a lot on like natural beauty, whatever assets I had, I would really just rely on that because I was too busy to do a skincare routine. So, um, once I started really getting into makeup, I like realized my passion really wasn't in makeup. Like I'm not a makeup artist. I don't care how like I apply my, my like eyeliner, everything. Like it's just not me. Uh, because I value going makeup free a lot, that's why you'll see me makeup free in all my videos, most of them. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like covering up my face. I don't like altering my face too much. Even like when it comes to the eyebrow trend where everyone's drawing their eyebrows on, like I just can't get down with that because as soon as you take your eyebrows off, I feel like you're going to look very different. And even with eyelashes, like as soon as you take your falsies out, as soon as you take the falsies off, your eyebrows off it's like you kind of really look different and I don't like that because I feel like that's a lot to maintain so that's where my love for skincare really just started to like come into play where it was just like I want flawless skin I want well moisturized and balanced skin to where I don't need to rely on makeup and I can really just let my natural self shine through and really just embrace my natural self so I never had that problem of like really cake facing too too much i mean i go through my my phases but really my true passion really does start with skincare like in skincare just my just who i am as a person skincare really is my spotlight so once i started getting into skincare i really 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 got into skincare really got into skincare so I was trying everything. I would buy a little drugstore. I would buy a lot of stuff from Marshalls and TJ Maxx because I could get my hands on some decent skincare products at a discounted price. 
uh, I so the first luxury skincare that I really invested on in for the first time was actually the Philosophy Miracle Worker Day and Night Cream. Those were my two first big purchases. And I honestly was like traumatized because I, I paid $72, but Philosophy sometimes does buy one, get one half price or buy one, get one. So the one day I just like bought a $72 cream and then I got the other one free. So like I got a, I got a really good deal on them. And I remember just being like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, but the problem was my skin was awful. The more I tested and tried with skincare products, my skin hated me. I had a ton, thousands of these little closed comedones all up my jawline and it sometimes would travel to here and it, it was a mess. I was a mess and didn't stop my love for skincare though. Like I kept it going, girl. I was like, no, like this is it, this is it. Like this is how people start. Like this is how people start. And this is not how you start, but this is how I started. I'm telling you now, Morgan Talks is telling you now, don't do this. So my closed comedomes were a joke. So then I started saying, all right, enough with the drugstore, enough with TJ Maxx, I want to start investing more money and I need to get to the bottom of this. And then I remember like Lily Galici, she did a uh, YouTube video about her favorite drugstore products and she actually, Biore, it was this Biore, she swore she used it and she said it was the only thing that could really keep her skin clean, clear and under control. Although I think, was it clean, clear and under control? Garnier? I think that's Garnier. No. Miss Lily Galici tried telling me that she was using Biore every day. So I wanted to be like Lily Galici and I went and I bought this disgusting Biore wash. And let me tell you something, that's when my skin was at its worst. I was a clogged mess. My skin was so stripped of dire nutrients from using this wash, this overly aggressive physical exfoliating face wash that of course said safe for everyday use twice a day used it twice a day then i was layering different vitamin c's on my face oh my god just so traumatizing and i was convinced i didn't need to buy la mer because i saw a hiram video a hiram skincare by hiram video where he was like worth it and he trashed luxury skincare in it so i was just like Little did I, like, we'll leave Hiram. We're not the same. But he, I saw his video, so I was like, definitely no La Mer. Like, no, it's not worth it. He just busted the myth. Like, ah, like, I'm going to stick with this, this. I just really thought I knew what I was doing. So then it turned into facials. I started getting intense chemical feels. <laughs> Because of all my closed comedones, I need I was convinced I needed to take the layer of skin off so all the congestion would come out. So I did this overly intense chemical peel at a Medi Spa professionally. I peeled like a reptile for, you know, over a week at work, showed up to business meetings, skin peeling on the on the table, on the conference table. Skin on the conference table. They're like Morgan, what like I was like, it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, I need to present this case. So I, oh God, just who, oh my God. So anyway, so then I realized once my chemical peel is over, I will have brand new skin underneath because a chemical peel takes off the first layer or a couple layers in my case of your skin and you're supposed to have new skin to start working with and to start overturning. So then I said, okay, I'm gonna invest in the whole Tatcha line. Yes. Tatcha, the Japanese beauty bread, it's, it's, it's luxury. It's luxury. Uh, again, the, the philosophy at that point, I've just discontinued using. It just wasn't working out. I don't know, maybe it was my fault. Maybe it just wasn't. I just wasn't too impressed by it. And at the time, Tatcha got super, super famous and popular and everybody wanted Tatcha. Everybody wanted Drunk Elephant. It was, you know, and they still do. Um, so I literally did it all. I got the rice enzyme peel. I got the cleanser. I got the Camilla cleansing oil, which is still my favorite oil cleanser. And I'm probably going to repurchase. I got the water cream. I got the Violet C radiance mask. I got, I know, I got the, the new exfoliating cleanser. 
what am I missing? I got the dewy skin mist. I got the silk cream. Like I literally was doing water cream by day, silk cream by night, hundreds and hundreds, almost to a thousand dollars worth of skincare. Literally started from beginning to end. Used all the products to completion. I was dedicated to Tatcha and convinced this was the answer to all my prayers. And let me tell you something, it didn't work. It still didn't work. I don't understand to this day that enzyme peel, the, the enzyme, the rice enzyme powder still breaks me out. I don't know what it is with that powder, but I cannot get it to work. Till this day, when I try to use a Tatcha product, it still breaks me out. I don't understand it. I just don't. And let me tell you something, I used it for well over three months. I used everything to completion, to completion. So Tatcha just was a brand that didn't work for me. I don't know why, but it just is, was what it was. And I just was convinced that I was doomed and that I just, I just didn't understand it. Till finally I started to, no. Okay, so this is when my life changed. I was still investing in different products, miserable, debating if I should, oh, I tried the Nivea cream. So then I started saying, okay, like maybe I should try La Mer at this point. Like maybe I should just do it. But I was like so convinced because my thought process was, okay, I can buy a whole Tatcha line for the price of like one La Mer product. Like why would I do that? Why, why, why can't I just buy a whole skincare system versus one product? Like what, I'm not doing it. Like I just didn't want to do it. So I tried duping it because I was watching people who were saying that Nivea cream was the same as La Mer. And I was like convinced, no, nope, La Mer is trash, Hiram said so, I could go get Nivea cream, it's the same thing, blah, blah, blah. I buy this friggin' Nivea cream and put it all over my face, girl. And oh my God, it was so cheap, I felt comfortable bringing it down my arms. And like, I was just bathing in it. Cystic acne occurred. Cystic acne. Here, here, my face was, oh my God. Like, like it just, so then I was really not gonna buy La Mer because I'm like, if this is the dupe, I don't even wanna know what La Mer is gonna do to me if this is what Nivea cream's doing to me. Like, I was a mess. I had to go back to Tatcha to at least lower the inflammation. So even the body Nivea, I couldn't even use Nivea cream on my legs. Cystic acne, like, I'm not kidding. I will not touch that stuff. It's hard for me to even do a review video for you guys because of my nightmares of Nivea cream. Like, no. But then, one magical day, I was at a Sephora. They had this beautiful La Mer stand. And I just freaking cracked. I said that, I put it on a credit card. I was like, I put it on a credit card and I was just like too scared to eat. Like, I was embarrassed that I even bought it. Like, not, I, now, I can't even believe it, but like, whatever. I bought this cream and I bought the soft cream by La Mer. Full one ounce jar. I didn't even know there were different versions of La Mer. I only, I only thought there was just one creme, but then I was like, wait, this is medium, whatever. I, but I was hell bent on the medium soft. I was like, I want this cream. And I bought it, girl, I bought it. Now, this is where things start taking a positive turn for my skin. Guys, within a week of using this one product, and I said that to myself, I'm not letting anything touch my face, only La Mer. I want to see what this stuff can do. Cleared my freaking closed comedones, cleared the redness, literally, literally this one cream changed my life changed my life. As soon as I applied the Creme de la Mer soft cream to my face, my immediate reaction, and I'm honest to God, I'm being real with you. My immediate first reaction to la Mer was, oh my God, like I don't want anything else on my face. I swear to God, as soon as I applied it, I was blown away. I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, I, my skin never felt so soft. It was so so beautiful. Everything started clearing up. I went to work the next day. This is disgusting. But I had people touching my skin. I go, look, feel my skin, guys. Like, feel, because I would always ask my coworkers, how does my skin look today? How does my skin look today? Like, and everybody would be like, oh, you're a little broken out. And I'd be like, ah, and I'd go back to the drawing board. So the next day, they were like, oh my God, I'm like, wow, like your skin looks really good. And then they were like, I was so soft. And then day after day, morning and night, 
only using this cream, my skin cleared dip. All my skincare problems went away. So once that happened, it was like opening Pandora's box. I was like, okay, I need everything La Mer. I don't want anything else touching my skin. Only La Mer is allowed to touch my skin. So I got, of course, the cleanser. I got the treatment lotion. I got the oil. This is like all within a month's time. Like I, every paycheck I got, I was investing in some type of La Mer product. Uh, I got the hydrolyzing hydration serum. I got, I got everything that I could, La Mer. Literally everything La Mer. And then, I mean, I kind of never went back. And here I am today still raving about that brand because it literally saved my skin. And then over time, I just was such a fanatic. I was such a La Mer fanatic, like not even kidding. I loved La Mer. I was like just talking about it. Like there's just like, this passion for skincare and La Mer and I loved it. And I looked forward every morning, like no makeup to work anymore. It was all about my skincare routine. Yes, I was starting to become 15 minutes late to work every day just to apply my skincare. I didn't even care. My skincare routine was like such top priority on my list. It actually helped me cope with stress in my life so much more. And it forced me to take time on myself and take pride in myself and my skin. And it really just, because just started developing into a more and more of a passion. Then I started dabbling into Sisley, and like here I am today where uh, I'm such like only luxury skincare really truly works for my skin. Like that's my traumatic background of like having skin problems. And uh, La Mer to this day is still my favorite brand. It just works for me. Like it just works for me it was a godsend and it honestly changed my life and the way i take care of myself not even kidding then i got sick then with my um my virus that kind of started my post viral fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia when i was hospitalized i remember being in the hospital bed and saying i don't want anything else touched I, well no my husband asked me what i needed from home and I said, please get me my travel size La Mer samples. I don't want to be in this hospital without my skincare. Whole family thought I was nuts. Everybody thought I was nuts. And I literally was doing a full skincare routine over the hospital sink. And the nurses were like, what am I looking at? This girl has like thousands of dollars worth of skincare here. And like her main focus, my main focus at night was can somebody wheel me over to the sink? Like I had a nurse, like, like I had a nurse take me out of my bed with my little drip and follow me to the sink where I was able to do like splash water on my face and use my creme de la mer. Rest is history. Then of course my condition set in and um, here I am because I started my YouTube channel. I have a whole video talking about my fibromyalgia and how my fibromyalgia really, um, I did do some YouTube videos like before I even got sick like early on but it really wasn't a reflection of what I loved. Skincare was really what I loved. So once I got sick, that's for another video. My husband bought me a camera and like basically long story short, that's my luxury skincare journey. Here I am today, still filming, still talking about La Mer, still buying luxury skincare, but really La Mer is my, my tried and true, La Mer's little empty boxes. La Mer is my tried and true love, true love in skincare and uh, it just goes to show you just how your passions, no matter what they are, can really inspire you to do whatever you want as long as you're passionate about it and as long as it shows through. And until the day I die, no matter what happens to me in the future, whether I start an online actual career, whether I continue my skincare journey in the future, La Mer is always going, to, I'll always be thankful to this brand. Not because they did anything necessarily for me financially or anything like that, but just because of the way this brand and the quality and the way these products have helped my skin, it really just transformed me. And for that, I just, I wanna thank the brand La Mer. Thank you. Thank you for your products. Everybody, this video was so, so long. I gotta go. Hope you enjoyed it. Follow your dreams, follow your skincare dreams. Don't let anybody discourage you from buying anything, whether because of price. Buy what you want, buy what makes you happy. Don't let these haters try to deter you because they're judgmental against designer luxury things. It's not fair. And a lot of people really just like that route and it's okay to love luxury. It's okay to love designer and it's okay to spend a lot of money on yourself. Everybody have a great, luxurious, healthy day. Bye.